welcome to the legendary 10 Goose Boxing Gym here in Southern California. I'm Ray Flores. Thank you so much for being with us here on the PBC and PBC on Fox social media pages. We are here getting ready for the Chris Areola workout as he prepares for his main event showdown in all Mexican heavyweight slugfest against Andy Ruiz Jr. That happening in 10 days time, May 1 on Fox Sports PBC pay-per-view. Lower than your traditional pay-per-view, we have a tremendous car from top to bottom. As you know, in our main event of the evening, the former heavyweight champion of the world, Andy Ruiz Jr., will match up against Chris the Nightmare Areola. Plus, the co-main event is going to be an all-action affair as Omar Figueroa Jr. will go head-to-head -head against Abel Ramos. Also, a rising super welterweight. He stands six feet, six inches tall. The towering inferno, Sebastian Fundora, will face his stiffest challenge to date as he takes on the hard-hitting Jorge Cota. And then also to begin the pay-per-view, it'll be Jesus Ramos, who is making waves at just 20 years of age. He will match up against his most difficult opponent on paper in the Olympian, Javier Molina. Before that, we'll be live on Fox coming up at 7 Eastern, 4 Pacific time. The action all comes your way from Dignity Health Sports Park. Limited fans will be in attendance. You can get them if you're in the area at AXS.com. But we are here at the 10 Goose Boxing Gym awaiting Chris the Nightmare Areola. I believe Chris is in here and he is joining us right now. Chris, it is great to be with you. How are you? First of all, Chris, we are 10 days away until you step inside the ring in your main event against Andy Ruiz. How pumped are you? You know what, I'm, not only am I pumped, but I'm ready. I'm ready for this fight. I, I've been waiting for this fight for four or five months, man, and, and it's gonna be a bar burner, that's for sure. You look in the best shape I think that I've ever seen you. You've been a professional for a long time, having challenged for the heavyweight championship of the world on three separate occasions. Is this the best that you've ever felt heading into a fight? You know what? I feel great, but uh, kind of feel better on the first. I've been working hard for four months, man. I've got to make this fight a great fight. You know, a great fight for the fans, a great fight for uh, for myself because this this is a crucial fight for my uh, for my career. Now, from an odds maker standpoint, you're a massive underdog heading into this fight. Do you use that as motivation, or is it something that you don't pay attention to? I, I honestly don't pay attention to it at all. But uh, if you want to make me an underdog, that's cool. I'll take it. I'll take the underdog thing. I'll put some money on myself. My final question before I let you go, we're going to talk with you in detail after your workout, but fighting outside Dignity Health Sports Park, that place, as we know, has been known to produce some amazing battles. But how much does it mean for you to be able to fight in front of limited fans at that venue? You know what? It's a beautiful venue. There's not a bad seat in the place, man. Every time I go there after a fight, I go sit out there with the fans up in the top and just enjoy the fight. So it's a great, it's a great uh, venue for sports, period. And uh, it's going to be fun. It's going to be a fun evening, a fun night of boxing, and I can't wait for that night. You're also kicking off Cinco de Mayo week that first Saturday, May 1st. So being Mexican, kicking off Cinco de Mayo weekend, does you take pride in that, being Mexican? Absolutely, man. Now, not only do I take pride of it, it's an honor to be fighting on that day. That used to be a May day, you know what I mean? Mayweather used to own that day, but now it's going to be us. It's going to be our day, oh, myself and uh, Andy Reese. All right, Chris, we'll let you go and work out. Get to action here as you get ready to work out. We'll talk to you after your workout. Thank you. Appreciate it, man. Chris Areola working out here. You're watching the Chris Areola workout here on the PBC and PBC on Fox YouTube page. Don't miss the pay-per-view coming up in 10 days' time, May 1, on Fox Sports PBC pay-per-view. Away we go with the workout.
the New Orleans brothers, Michael Thon, James Tony, the late great Diego Chico Corrales, and also it is the home of Chris Admiral as he gets set for his main event showdown against Andy Ruiz Jr. That coming your way in 10 days time, May 1, on Fox Sports PBC pay-per-view. It is an all-Mexican night of boxing. Expect fireworks in every single pay-per-view of there. And also, before we go live with the pay-per-view at 9 Eastern, 6 Pacific time, two hours before that, we will be live on Fox with Edislandi Lada and Thomas Lamana in our main event. Also, during the course, of this workout, I'm going to be talking with the legendary trainer. He's a phenomenal broadcaster, but he's done so much in the sport of boxing. I'm talking about Joe Goosen, as I will talk with him. And I saw Joe earlier today, and he's wearing his legendary uh, denim jacket, as always. So we will talk with Joe Goosen himself and break down this main event matchup. But I will tell you, that in my estimation, Chris Ariola is in the best shape that we've ever seen him. He's focused, he's determined, and boy, can he crack and expect fireworks in that one. May 1st on Fox Sports BBC pay-per-view. And here's another thing. We're kicking off Cinco de Mayo week in style, and it is cheaper than your normal pay-per-view. So enjoy the night of boxing at Dignity Health Sports Park or on pay-per-view May 1st. You're watching the Chris Adeola Workout here on the PBC and also PBC on Fox social media pages.
Or no? I got an Angel Stadium when the Dodgers play. Okay. And every now and then I'll play Angel Stadium just because I can get on the Metro and get on the Metro to come back to. You can get on the Metro to go to Angel Stadium? From, from Riverside to get on the Metro, it takes you straight to Hooters, which is right next to Angel Stadium. Oh, man. And then an hour or 30 minutes after the game, the next day? Yeah. There's one that leads back to Riverside. Oh, that's nice. I know. It's so fucked up. Yeah. <laughs> is Dodger Stadium far from you? Yeah. Oh, it is? Well, it's about the same distance. Uh-huh. But when I go to Dodger Stadium, I don't get all of you the fuck. <laughs> I'm going to Union Station. Yeah. And then I take the bus from there to Dodger Stadium. Got you. It's like, to park the Union Station like 20 bucks. Yeah. To park the Dodge Stadium is like 30 bucks. Yeah. But not only that, you're like, not getting out the traffic. Of course. Yeah. We, I used to Uber it there when I lived in Santa Monica. We had to Uber or whatever, and that was like, I mean, it was a hike, but it was still better than driving and stuff. Yeah. Ubers are pretty good there too. Yeah, they, they do a good job over there. Last time we went though, so, yeah, it's fun, man. I'm excited to see you fight. Yeah, me too. You know, can't wait, man. You know, people are going to be grilling carne asada and everything, getting ready for the show, right? <laughs> <laughs> huh? I mean, the weather's beautiful out here. I mean, it, was snow it was snowing back home yesterday. <laughs> yeah, it was snowing in Chicago yesterday. <laughs> the, the White Sox game got postponed today because of uh, bad weather. So what you are getting right now is an unfiltered conversation between all of us as we're just hanging out with Chris Areola as he's working out and talking some baseball. You never know what you're going to get when you watch these workouts and away we go. I know Chris is a big Dodger fan and uh, I all day, all day Dodger fan. And apparently Chris is going to make his way to Chicago to go to Wrigley at some point this summer. So uh, for those of you in Chicago, you want to hang out with Chris Areola, we'll let you know. And uh, by all means, hang out with the nightmare himself. We show him around town. Also, we'll be talking with the legendary Joe Goosen coming up in a few moments. Joe's an encyclopedia of knowledge and has been around the sport at the highest levels over and over and over again. Chris, you know what's funny is I remember watching Joe in the corner with Gabriel Ruelas when I was like six years old, not to make him feel old, but like, that's what I, re I remember watching that when Chavez fought Halligan. Yep, I remember that too, which is crazy, right? Oh man, unreal. And for the record, Ruelas got uh, the bad decision on that one. Azuma Nelson should not have won that fight, but we'll talk about that a little bit later. Yes, my friend. 
Does that affect your personal life? Like, do you feel better about yourself, or like, how does that? More jealousy. <laughs> <laughs> nah, you know, in all honesty, yeah, I do feel better. As far as I could take my shirt off, not, not really be that embarrassed, but not that I ever was body shamed or body, yeah, body beautiful, or whatever. But at the end of the day, I just feel in better shape for boxing. That's the most important thing for me right now. Like I said, I'm not I'm not no bodybuilder. I'm none of that. I'm a boxer. So all that matters is that I look good in the boxing ring. So what was the question? Does the what was that last question? Does it what? Does it make you feel different? Like being being in great shape. Your personal life. Your personal oh, in your personal life. You feel like what? better as a person, happier, like, like that, like that. Thing. Or maybe meaner. <laughs> How do you see him, uh, Dan? Pardon? Joe. How do you see Joe. Joe Stevens, I, I I always feel good. I have no reason to feel any other way. And I, but of course, I always feel better when I know my guy's working hard. You know, and. That's why I feel fantastic right now. I'm very <laughs> confident and I'm very calm. Because Chris has been doing what he's supposed to be doing. What's up? Everything's good? Yeah. Good to see you, Jonathan. That's all you can ask. Keep going. Don't stop. Come on. Yeah. When do we start training, Chris? What? Like January, uh, December? So, what? The Beginning of, was it the first week in January? Yep. You guys have been training since January? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So, so May 1st is now the date, obviously, but was there possibility of this fight happening before then? Yes. Is, is that why? Because typically yes. training camps are, what, eight to ten weeks at yeah. max? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I kept getting, like, I heard it was going to be, like, March 24th. Okay. At one point, then it was, like, April 20 something, mm -hmm. then back to April May 20th. Yeah, the best to May 1st. So, so, yeah, it goes back as far as March that we were thinking we yeah. might be fighting. So, in terms of making sure that he doesn't peak too early, Joe, like what have you been able to do, or have you been tapering things off, or is it, I mean, what's the whole, you know? Not really, because it, we've been consistent, mm -hmm. you know. Um, you get used to doing a certain amount of rounds. Of course, we didn't start out doing our full-fledged workouts. Mm -hmm. we, we, we worked our way into it. But once we got there, we've maintained that. And it hasn't been so taxing as that I felt, oh, we better pull back. Yeah. He's getting in too good a shape. Yeah. You know? And nobody's gotten worn out. You haven't gotten worn out from this. It's been fun, actually. And um, it's kind of what fighters do. You're supposed to be in the gym training. Mm -hmm. You know, now, certain weeks, do you... Do you maybe do something different? Do you shake it up and maybe do different stations in the gym that aren't as taxing as other ones? Yeah, but you're still getting in the round. So you want him to stay sharp, but with the exception of like not putting him through that physical grind that is a training camp, well, you know, all the time. Look, I mean, every day should be a worthy workout. You should get a worthy workout. Mm. But other days, when it includes sparring and maybe more heavy bags, mm. and it does double end and speed bag and rope and weave bag, those are those are easier drills. They're less taxing on the mm -hmm. body, but there's, it still works. It still takes energy and it still takes conditioning. 
The one thing that I've heard about fighters who are talking about when they come into this gym is that they thought, when they come into this gym, they thought that they were working hard before, but after being in here, they're like, I was not, now I understand what hard work is in the boxing gym. Yeah, I think most trainers, and probably goes for our opponent's camp too, mm -hmm. because I believe they put in an honest day's work as well. Um, what happens is you, you have X, you know, you, you have X amount of experience and you start noticing, hey, what's really, if you got two guys that are of the same talent, mm -hmm. what, what separates them in a fight? If they both have the same qualities, let's say they're a clone of each other, which one wins the fight? Yeah. Who, who wins the fight if they're a clone of each other? The one in better shape. And so that's, I think, the underlying, you know, thought process here is, you know, yeah, we've got talent, he's got talent, but we got to be in better shape, ultimately, than anybody else we get in the world. And that's, we kind of strive for that. And I believe there are plenty of other trainers that do the same thing. They understand that concept. So yeah. it's about pushing the pace then. Pardon? Put it, it's about pushing the pace, being able to push the pace the entire time. It, it's about no matter what, you're, what resistance you're going to meet in the ring, you're going to be able to deal with it and then even have that, that nice spurt at the end. Mm -hmm. You know, the last three, four rounds where, you know, they expect you to slow down, but you're actually picking up a little steam. So because he hasn't been in the ring since August of 2019, because yeah. it's been a longer training camp, do you think then that this quote-unquote ring rust won't be a thing because of how extensive the training camp has been? Well, I think it certainly mitigates things, yeah. Um, and uh, look, you know, everyone's kind of been out of the ring for a while. Mm -hmm. They're not alone. Yeah, obviously. Yeah. So, um, but, you know, these guys, are, they're veterans. They've been around a long time, especially Chris. And they know what it is. They know how to turn on the switch when it comes to fighting. And this isn't my first long day out. Yeah, you've been through I've had, this. I've, had to, I've been through two, three long layoffs. So I, I know how to get back into it. At the end of the day, a fight to fight. I'm getting in there and I'm going to fight. It's the same shit. How do you know in training camp, though, when, when you're going through a training camp, you're like, all right, you know, my time in is back or my rhythm or, I mean, I mean, do you know, is there a specific point in camp where you're like, now things are clicking for me or does it just all depend on, you know, when you get in the ring? It all depends on the spine. It always depends on the spine. That's where you really know where your timing is at. You know, mid-work, that's another one, but at the end, it's all in, it's all in spine. Spine is where you really... Gauge your, spot, your timing and gauge where you're at in your training camp. Let's go back to the Kovnatsky fight. That fight was bananas. I mean, you guys set records, about six or seven records. How did you keep up that pace? In the 12th round, you guys threw 210 punches. I mean, that's, that's 110 punches or 105 punches between both of you each. So how did you keep up that pace? Right here, because I did everything I had to do at the gym. I worked my ass off in the gym every fucking day. And that's how I was able to go. Honestly, if you would have told me I had three more rounds, I could have probably gave you three more rounds too. So you could have gone 15? I could have gone 15 oh, rounds, no man. problem. I really, I, I, said it, I said it once and I'll say it again. The, the, win, the fight's always won in the, in the gym and we put all the work in here. We worked our asses out to put in that performance and you know, to win the fight. I personally felt like I won that fight. The worst I could have, I gave myself is a draw. Mm -hmm. And uh, that being said, it was a fun fight. For me, it was a fun fight. I was smiling, I was taking punches, and I was giving punches as much as I was taking them. I almost feel like certain guys, I mean, I, I mentioned this with Joe last night about a fighter, that there, there's a terminology, a zest for combat. I feel like you love when you're, you know, eating shots and you're delivering it. Like, you love to fight. Like, you were born, you were put on this earth to be a fighter, is that fair to say? That's very fair to say. I, I love what I do. I'm a fortunate person to have been a fighter since a young age. I'm fortunate that my dad gave a fuck about me to be in the gym with me. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, I'm very fortunate for that. And um, I bleed boxing. I put myself out there every time I box, every time I fight. Even if I'm not in the best shape, I know I owe it to the fans to give them a great yeah. fight, to take an ass beating even if I have to, you know what I mean? I'll take that ass beating because I deserved it, because I didn't put forth the effort. 
So one thing about you is how honest you are. I remember watching your fight against Klitschko back in 2009 at Staples Center. It was a crazy crowd, and you were just so honest and authentic after the fight. You know, why is that? I mean, because you're just so matter-of-fact during, in the lead-up to a fight and then after a fight, which I don't know of many guys that would be as brutally honest as you are. You know what? Um, I always said, you know, it's better to be honest than just to tell a white lie. Because, shoot, people respect you more when you're honest. You know, I like Charles Barkley. There's a lot of people that, you know, like, he gets in trouble, he's going to tell you how it is. Mm -hmm. He ain't going to sugarcoat it. No. And you know what? That's how I feel. My, my dad always told me to be honest with yourself and be honest with everybody else. They'll respect you a lot more for that. And that's one thing that I take, I take with me, you know. Just, don't not, just, just own up to it. Own up your shit. Own up your mistakes. It's okay to say I'm sorry. It's okay to be, to uh, um, say I messed up. The thing that's not okay with me is someone that just comes up with excuses that ain't valid. Well, you've had a lot of trainers, not a lot of trainers, but you've had several trainers, obviously working with the legend and Joe Goosen. How much have you improved, even at this stage of your career, as you're now 40 years of age, but how much have you learned and grown and improved? In all honesty, I, a lot of defensive, defensively, I've grown a lot mm. with Joe. Keep my hands up, countering and stuff like that. That's probably the biggest thing I take out of working with Joe. And another thing is that he's not reinventing the wheel but he's just making sure that the wheel's round. Because motherfuckers, like a trainer be like, yeah, 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 do this, do this. Then he's gonna go work over here, then go work over there, not even paying attention to what the hell you're yeah. doing. So Joe's just there, there, watching, watching, watching. Pick your hand up, so it's a, it's a big difference, believe it or not. Yeah. If you give me a round, I'll fuck around around. I don't know how to fuck around, <laughs> Like, seriously. <laughs> we'll let you get to your workout, Chris. Chris being brutally honest again. I right? mean, hey, you got to love that. I mean, he's authentic and he's who he is. Chris Arreola, I mean, what you see is what you get. Yeah, we saw last night in a couple of those fights, one, that one resentment fight, where yeah. there was a brawl, it was a tough fight. Mm -hmm. They were at each other's throat, but yet, at the end of the round, was, <laughs> they, they, they hugged. Yeah, other. and then after the fight, they hugged with each other. It, it's like they enjoy it. And <laughs> We would be going hell. <laughs> like, I know exactly. A little morbid. We are a little morbid. You <laughs> <laughs> said I forgot that they morbid or something is what he was saying. Yeah, might be. This is yours, Ricky. Yes, sir. All right. So obviously, there's a little stretch. Going on here, the upper body. Okay. Oh, so that's, this is what he's doing, he's stretching yeah. the upper body? Yeah, there's several drills on this that we can get to, which we're going to get to. Uh, go along. Just read this one, right? When you turn it, it works for us. Yeah, it works for us. Yeah, it works for us. Yeah, it works for us. That's a little high. That's a little high? No, that's great, but it's going to fall. I know, that's why I'm going to do something. What you going to do? What you going to grab the tape? You feel like you're not getting better? Yeah? I'm not feeling better. Yeah, because we're watching the list. Because I didn't want that. Like, you're walking into that. You guys want me to move this? There we go. All right. Oh, look at that. <laughs> he's a, he's a, uh, a director. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> now, give Chris the film on it so he can edit. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> Yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So it all depends on who can withstand each other's shots. All of that. There's a few other. There's a few. Yeah. There's a few other uh, intangibles yeah. there, but that's one of them. You know. But they both have proven have a great chin. Yeah. Yeah. They both don't throw a lot of punches. There, one thing about this fight, Joe, is that I can't see how it won't be explosive. I mean, I mean, it's there's certain. I'm, I am so confident that this fight is going to be just bananas and, and wild inside that ring that it's going to be just two guys coming at each other, just bombing away upon one another. Yeah, I mean, there'll probably be a, a certain amount of. Uh, I wouldn't say I don't think they're going to feel each other out. No. Of course. Uh, you know, it'll work your way into a fight, even yeah. if it's, you know, even if it's just one round, you know, mm. get a little bit of, of feel. feel. Right. Uh, but I think once the first guy lands a big shot, oh, and, and then it's going to be, here we go. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. Chris? Yeah. No, but it's color coordinated. Oh, yeah. In case you hadn't known. <laughs> Matches with the shorts. And that does too. Yeah. That. <laughs> So, Joe, when do you start to taper him off? I mean, we're on, we're 10 days away, so is it Friday? Is it Saturday? You gotta remember, um, that with, with heavyweights, they don't have to cut weight. Uh -huh. So, you know, when you taper uh, anybody that has to make weight, yeah. it's a different story. You have to cut back on, because they're cutting back on food. Yes. You have to cut back on the work. On the work. Okay. And, so that doesn't hold true with heavy ones. Okay. What you do have to watch out for either way is is sparring. It's like when's enough sparring. Okay. okay. Um, so, so when, when so does that, the sparring taper down? Is, is well, he done with that yet? Here's the thing. You've got to go into the, we're going to go into the bubble next week. I'm not sure what day, maybe yeah. Wednesday. Uh -huh. So you got Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, then the fight Saturday. Yeah. So Monday or Tuesday, we might just do a little bit of sparring. Okay. Nothing heavy. Just to keep throwing the ball around, get a little I see. Practice. Yeah. It's like it's keeping, you know, uh, keeping warm. A baseball club. Yes. 
they take batting practice before every game. Uh -huh. Now they know how to hit a ball. They know they play 160 some game. But yet, why do they take batting practice before the game? Yeah, to stay sharp. To keep their eye. Yeah. Okay. So it's the same thing in, in basketball. They do shoot arounds before the game. Every right. time. Hockey. For the most part. Okay. Yep. You, Morning skate. And see, I like the same concept in boxing. You don't. We don't need full scale. Or sparring for 10 rounds. No. I don't mind. The last few days, or the, the first few days of the last week, week. Just to throw the ball around. Okay. Just, just, to keep just keep them sharp and everything. Yeah. And it's never a brutal workout. Yeah. It's, it's, it's you're, you're pulling back a little bit on mm -hmm. power, speed, all of that. And you bring in a guy that can work with you, a guy that understands that concept. Yeah. So he's not looking to prove anything. All of that proving stuff happened in the past three, yeah. four weeks. Already. Yeah. Okay. So this is the one where you bring in a, a guy that understands how to work with another fighter that's going to be fighting in five, six days. Exactly. He gets that concept. You don't want any bumps, bruises, lumps, cuts. And so you just work nice and... Uh, just to get a little bit of a sweat in, you know, keep the juices yeah, flowing. Well, you're going to get a sweat anything you do here. It's more for keeping your eyes sharp. Okay. Okay. Um, where, you know, you're still pairing, you're slipping, you're touching, you're... Your, your timing things. Yes. You don't want to lose that timing. That no. Can, that can, you can lose that very quickly. Even over the course of a few days. Some guys, believe it or not, yeah. you don't even have to. You can literally get away with not sparring them for very much for the fight because they're just, they're just adhered towards it. Oh, wow. I, I can name names. Yeah. But there are other fighters that I had that were champions that if you didn't spar them, Let's say they fought on a Saturday. I'd spar them on a Thursday. Very light, four rounds. Wow. With the right music. Yeah. You know? And just to, to play, play touch. Yeah. They needed it. And it, it benefited them. So it all depends on the fighter then. Yeah, some fighters can forget everything is that they need to know in like a week. Make any sense, Chris, what I just yeah. said? Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. So he doesn't disagree with that. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Uh, everybody's different. Mm -hmm. You know, you could bring a guy like Raphael Weller yeah. into the gym after being out for a month. And you go, wow, well, has he been training every day? No, that's his first day of sparring. You go, looks like he's ready to fight. <laughs> Mike Nunn was the same one. Yeah. Uh, Raphael's brother, Gabriel, no. You had to keep him going. Keep, keep him going, yeah. Fight. It was better for him. So you got to know your fighter. Now, is this just based on things that you've come across with the individual fighter, or is that just your style training-wise, Joe? No, I mean, you figure certain things out. Yeah. Just like fighters figure things out for themselves, yeah. you know? Trainers figure things out, you go, oh, okay. Not everyone's a clone. Yeah, you know, exactly. Everyone has different, you know, faults, foibles, quirks, and so you, you, you try to find out what they are. And, where they perform best. And then you figure out a formula for that particular fighter. Yeah. And that's the that's the long and short of it, really. True. You've got to know your fighter. And they are not all the same, that's for sure. Yeah, well, they're all When it comes to fight But um, when it comes to him, I mean, do you are you around him a lot during the morning of the fight, or does it all depend? Or no, no, no. We're, we're, we're together every day. <laughs> okay, that's not gonna stop. Jonathan, do me a favor. John, just grab me the pop out of my bag, will you please? Jonathan. Okay. Jonathan. Jonathan? Jonathan? Oh, okay. Are you about the <laughs> the old Seinfeld episode. That was, that was I was he cracking was, up. Was, hey, I'm walking. Yeah, do you want the ribbon?
good. Jeez. Ten rounds of that? Wow. Yeah, right on the inside. Oh, those are you guys? <laughs> yeah, they may be coming in here, you never know. They just parked yeah, right yeah, now. Yeah. Oh, there they go. Greet him, Chris. Uh, happy birthday! A member of the Los Angeles Fire Department stopping in and greeting Chris Areola. You never know what's going to happen during these public workouts. Want to thank those that protect us, those that are in the Police department, the fire department, our EMTs, Los Angeles Fire Department doing a wonderful job as always. Thank them for their dedication to keeping us safe. Yeah, we did have a fight last year. Yep. On FS1. I only watched the last three rounds. We were busy running around. I was working. Oh, gotcha. I always kept you guys. Well, we, we yeah, thank you so job. much. I appreciate it. We enjoy watching you. Oh, Joe's awesome. He's. Talking about Baja Fresh? Oh, <laughs> Overlanding a 4x4 plane at the beach. So hopefully we catch it in San Felipe. We'll, we won't watch it by. Oh, very cool. Yeah, yeah. Hopefully San Felipe is playing it somewhere. Uh, yeah, his time is off. Yeah, I see. We'd love to go to the fight. Yeah, it's going to be wild. I mean, that, that place, especially for a fight like this, it's the perfect venue. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For all the Volcanos there. Big time. The workout here, we're at the 10 Goose Boxing Gym. The legendary Joe Goosen in the house. He's the trainer of Chris Areola. Chris Areola getting ready for his matchup against Andy Ruiz Jr. In 10 days' time. 
great to be with all of you as we are just a week and a half away until this Mexican heavyweight slugfest. Andy Ruiz Jr. matching up against this man, Chris Areola. You are getting a full look at what Chris Areola does to prepare for a prize fight. And we are probably no, not even close to halfway done. So you're going to see how uh, Chris prepares himself for battle. Let's not forget the Ognatsky in August of 2019. And incidentally, they set compu box records for most punches thrown for heavyweight matchup. And CompuBox has been around for a long time. They've counted punches for thousands of fights. That's Ron, I think some 30 years ago, if uh, Dan Canobio or Bob Canobio is watching, I'm sure they can go and let me know how long CompuBox has been around. But the point of what I'm saying is that Chris Areola throws a lot of punches in bunches. He loves to deliver as much as he takes and expect more of the same on May 1 on Fox Sports PBC pay-per-view. An explosive night of boxing as we begin Cinco de Mayo week on that Saturday. Ray Flores here in Southern California for this big night as we are 10 days away from fight night. And also tomorrow, I will be in San Diego in the training camp with Andy Ruiz. Look forward to talking with Andy. And also Eddie Reynoso, the esteemed trainer of Andy Ruiz Jr., who incidentally happens to be the trainer of Canelo Alvarez and Ryan Garcia, along with uh, a host of others. Also, Oscar Valdez as well. I'm already in the shirts, so we're, we're just going to have to do the job. Look at that. And just spread everything out so you can move that all the way back. I can him on No, I can go. Depends on the Have one more round on the speed back for Chris Areola as he prepares for his matchup coming up against Andy Ruiz. Also, want to let you know that the pay-per-view is cheaper than most pay-per-views. So you get a cheaper pay-per-view and you get all action for outstanding fights. And listen, to kick off Cinco de Mayo week to me, I don't think there's anything better than watching a full night of boxing. And if I were you, I'm just making a suggestion to you, the audience. If I was at home, I would go to my parents' house. My dad makes the best carne asada in the world. He puts a little lime juice on it. Get your beverage of choice. I'm talking about if I was at home watching the pay-per-view, I would have my dad make his what? famous. What? Tell me what he wants to well, make. I'm saying my dad's probably gonna make some carne asada, yeah. with, and my mom's gonna make some rice. Yeah. We're gonna have a couple, you know, since we're 21 and over, we're gonna have some modelos, right. you know, some some beverages, okay. you know, we're gonna you have got carne asada, some, some rice. We're gonna have some guacamole. We're gonna have some chips. No frijoles. Oh, frijoles, of course. Okay. My aunt Elizabeth makes frijoles and stuff. No disrespect to my mom, but my aunt makes the best frijoles in the world. Okay, so now the carne asada is already. Yeah, the carne asada. I mean, the, the carne asada is the main event. Does your dad marinate that? Oh, yeah, he marinates it overnight. He puts his special. I don't, I don't know what his specialty is, but it's like the, the lime juice and the tenderizer and cebolla and limon and everything. He gets, he gets Lowry seasoned salt and everything. And, and, then, and then you know what? He gets, he gets the green onions at that. You know the green onions? The, he puts those on the grill. Those are very... Oh my gosh, it's unbelievable. Oh yeah, oh yeah, exactly, the big bulbs. You know how it is, Joe. So I'm just saying to you, the public, if, if I were you, that's what I would do. That's how you kick off Cinco de Mayo week. 
And then the main event, you get Chris Areola, Andy Ruiz, and then also... Not miss it, Chris Ariola, Andy Ruiz Jr. Do not miss it as Chris Ariola working out here. Yes, yes, Joe. Yeah. You want me to do something? Nice to meet you, Danny. Pleasure. Good to meet you. Arthur. Good to meet you. Two-time Olympian, boxing Olympian. Oh wow. Mayweather in the semifinals. No way. Oh wow, good to meet you. Now, he's not the heavyweight that's going to be the main heavyweight that's going to be in the Olympics. Okay. Oh wow. Okay, in August, and I'll be training. Oh, nice. Six, seven, three hundred pounds. Six, seven, three hundred pounds. Twenty-three years old. Oh man. Durgan. <laughs> What's his name? Big Durgan. Oh man. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. So tell me about your heavyweight. He's going to be in the Olympics, and Joe, you're going to be working with him, man, when he turns yeah, pro? Oh, boy, boy. Yeah. okay. Oh, well, you signed him up. Beautiful. He's with the right man, and Joe Busa. Oh, wow. He's a legend. Joe's a legend. Oh my gosh. Wow. Holy moly. Oh my gosh. Oh, so he's with BBC. That's excellent. Okay, so breaking news here. Oh man. Wow. Jeez. Yeah, I was gonna say. Yeah, yeah, tell the yeah, yeah. Man, he's he's a big, he's a big strong kid. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Wow. We're excited. Oh, of course. Without a doubt. Let's talk about that. All right, so you may want to accept that bell, John, please. And then you guys. Huh? Oh, wow. Whoa, look at that, the athleticism. Okay, here we go. What, you guys still over here? Yep, no problem. Uh -huh. Thank you. Oh, he looks good. Man. I like him a lot. I can't wait to see him as a pro. I'm going to see him in the Olympics, too. Right, so tell, tell me about this, this heavyweight that you have that is going to be working with Joe Goosens and watching Chris Adeola work out. So tell me about your, your heavyweight. What's his name again? Gurgen. And he's representing what country? Armenia. And he's 300 pounds, right? And he's signed a PBC. 
and he will be make, and he will be making. Uh, he, so he's with Top Round and TGB Promotions, and he'll be making his debut sometime in the fall, I assume, right? As a professional. Uh, Okay, so maybe July he might be making his pro debut, even before the Olympics. Well, that'd be outstanding. And how old is he? Just turned 23. So breaking news, we have a new heavyweight signed to PBC, who will be representing Armenia in the 2021 Olympics. He'll be working under Joe Goosen. Okay. Okay. Oh, so so he, he hasn't qualified for the Olympics just yet. Okay. Okay. So he has two fights in Paris in what June? Okay. Okay. And then and then you want him potentially here in July if you can to make his pro debut. And then if he makes it to the Olympics, then he goes to Tokyo a couple weeks later. Okay, so you go, okay, well that's, yeah, a good idea. I see. Yeah. Beautiful. Oh, John, John, okay, very cool. Well, that's great. Okay. Beautiful. We're excited. Well, good luck to him. Thank you so much. We look forward to seeing him make his BBC debut. Breaking news here on the Chris Adder on the workout. So we're hosting this workout and stuff and work with Joe on the air and just do a lot of different things in boxing. So commentator and stuff, so it's a blast. Absolutely, yeah, definitely. We got a great team. Great team. Well, we're excited to see him come out, 300 pounds, working with Joe Goose, the ability he has. Also, was just told that CompuBox founded in 1985. My goodness, can't believe CompuBox is. Joe, I didn't know that CompuBox has been around since 1985. Talk about legendary. Bob is the, the origin, yeah, yeah. So it's Bob Canobio, Dan Canobio, Nick Canobio. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. So Joe, how long does he, like when you guys come into the gym, how long does he typically work out? 
about two hours, two and a half? Does it all depend on Usually, the day? Yeah, minimum two and a half hours. Minimum two and a half? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, minimum. So that's why fighters say when you come in here, you get that real work. One more time, right? I said, so that's why when fighters say that they come, they come here, they get that quote unquote real work. You get that real work because he's constantly watching. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And there's no half passing shit. Now, see. Some people like that and some people uh, <laughs> don't mind it. Yeah. No, but for me, look, I mean, you, you got to be there for the guy. And if there's things that are, you know, defensively, even if it's small stuff, you still yeah. have to remind the guy. Because, it doesn't. It's like a. It's like a pitcher in a batter. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It doesn't have to be a perfect pitch for a guy to hit a home run. True. At the top of the game, these guys are so good. You can hit something. You can grab something low and away, like Kirk Gibson did. Yep. With one hand and put it out of the park. Yeah. Same, it's the same thing with a fighter. You can't give them an inch. Yeah. Because they'll capitalize on that. Mm -hmm. You know, lesser fighters maybe not, but the guys at the top. You give them those openings, and they they're going to take it. They will take it. So. Well, especially at this level. I mean, this is that that, as they like to say, that rarefied air yeah. when it comes to fighters. Like you make one mistake, and they will make you pay severely. Exactly. Exactly. So it, it behooves you to at least keep a close eye on the things that can get your fighter into trouble. You understand? So you and I talked about this a little bit last night, but I want to know, especially for the viewers, how do you maintain your composure when something's happening and the crowd's going crazy? I'm probably losing my mind too, but how do you maintain your composure and are so relaxed and just so in the moment? Well, I think that holds true with most trainers because why? You're in the gym every day with your fighter. Um, you you um, you don't run around the gym screaming and getting emotional. Yeah. And so that carries on into the fight. So when you get in the fight, you don't want to change your personality yeah. from the gym to the to the fight. To the fight. Yeah. You know, you want you don't want that fighter going, who's this guy in front of me now? Exactly. So, so again, so you're, you're 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 like any other instructor. You instruct with calmness yes. and, and firmness and you know, you're direct with it. And it's the same thing applies in the corner once you get in the real fight. You bring that same personality. Yep. Now sometimes the battle will get more heated in a fight than it ever will in the, in the gym. Yeah. So you, you may raise the temperature a little bit in the corner depending on what you're trying to extricate from the fight. Yep. So, um, but sometimes you can just say that with, a, you know, with firmness and they get it. But you know, again, these guys are almost in a hypnotic trance where they're in that corner. Very true. And you can't bombard them with emotion or too much rhetoric. You've, you've got to be to the point, give them one or two salient points mm -hmm. that they can absorb and uh, hopefully implement whatever instructions you give them during that round. So, so with, with you, when you were in the corner, I mean, obviously people, I've never asked you this, but Corrales Castillo, yeah. that madness that happened, one of the greatest rounds of all time, how did you stay in because you're, you're you know it's like the fighter if, you, if you're if you're doing your job as a trainer you've got blinders on and you're totally focused and you've got tunnel vision mm -hmm. on what you're looking at right there and you're focused on the two guys that's it mm -hmm. you you don't hear the crowd just like the fighters will tell you they rarely hear the crowd yeah um so you don't hear the crowd you you know, you don't see the crowd. You know, for the Corrales Casillo fight, I don't ever remember looking into the crowd. Oh, wow. During the whole fight. Yeah. It, it was that intense of a fight mm -hmm. from round one on. Um, it was a white knuckler, as they say. Yeah. So, that was... Uh, Moving right along. All out Mexican. No, it's all matter of fact. Yeah. No, it's happening in real time, and you've got to say something. Why not? A substance, you know, During that time. Substantive that you think will the fighter will grasp on. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it's not even instruction. Sometimes it's just a, a quick motivation. Like emotional thing. 
emotional thing without the emotion. Okay. Um, and, um, you know, it varies. If you try to plan that out, it doesn't work. There's no script. Yeah. Because things change. Things don't necessarily go the way you plan on the end game. So there's the script for that. Yeah, true. You know, there isn't a script, so you have to analyze what's going on and then come to some firm, quick conclusions about what you're going to say. Mm -hmm. Because they're apparent to you. You know your fire and you know what you've got to say at that point. And you never know what that's going to be. Yeah. You just have to be able to the adapt. Top, the very top you do. You yeah. have Click to it on be and able to do what your job is to do. Uh -huh. And under pressure, in a, a, a small period of time, you've got to relay some instructions that are beneficial to the body. Mm. Somehow, somehow. And that's pretty much it. You, know, you really, uh, yeah, let's start out here. I'll let you do your thing, Jill. Well, you guys got to be careful right here because they're going to be yeah. swinging. So let me let me move you down just a little bit to your left. Uh, you guys, if you don't mind, you can stay up there. Yeah. There we go. Hmm? Yeah, we're, we're just talking about in terms of, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So, again, you're watching the Chris Adeola workout here on the PBC on Fox and PBC YouTube page. Don't forget, May 1st, 10 days away from Chris Adeola, Andy Ruiz Jr. And you get a true, authentic Chris Adeola here. This is what happens during training camp, folks. So, you are getting an up close and personal look at what it is to prepare for a prize fight. And they are going to go at it in 10 days time. Chris Adeola, Andy Ruiz on Fox Sports PBC pay-per-view. Do not miss it as we begin Cinco de Mayo week, also promoted by TGB Promotions, presented by Premier Boxing Champions. I know that Tom and Brittany Goosen Brown working very hard, as always, along with Kelly Swanson here, PR extraordinaire, and we thank all of you for watching. We continue with the workout. Here's Chris Adeola. You can see here we're working on short punches. Okay. And those are, you know, what you say, touch and counter, touch and go. Touch okay. And go. So there's a lot of touch and go in right here. There's going to be some slips, so some quick slips, and then counters off those slips. There's a weave coming in there. So you've got your touch and go, you've got your slips and counters, you've got your weave and counters. So all emulating things that are uh, going to happen in the course of the fight. Oh, yeah. So with his back on the ropes and everything. Well, yeah. I mean, for this particular drill. Yes. We'll do the same drill while we're moving as well. Okay. okay. Maybe not today, but we do it all the time. So you want to put him in every position imaginable that you can think of over the course of the fight that are going to mimic what he's going to experience potentially. Yeah. I, I put him in the corner expressly for this so that you really can't go anywhere. Okay. I think there's going to be a lot of that fight where neither guy is going anywhere. Yeah. Whether it's in the corner, in the middle of the ring. They're, they're just going to plant their feet? Well, yeah, there might be a few little surprises there along the way. Yeah. You never know. But yes. Oh, I like it. <laughs> Very cool. I like it. He spends more on hats than I do on my car paint. <laughs> Chris, how many, how many hats do you have? Like Dodger hats? Oh, a lot. Like what? Gym hats for 30 me. or 40? Uh, about 30, 40. 30, yeah, 40? Yeah, wow, easy. man. Like in the house, I have them spread all over the place, but you have to just grab it for now.
Yeah. How long's he been with you for, Joe? I'd say s about seven years. You've been with him for seven years? Uh -huh. Oh, wow. John started out as an amateur fighter. Uh huh. And I think found his calling. Mm -hmm. How old is he? He's only, what, 26, 27? What are you, 26, John? Mm -hmm. 26. Wow. So he's, he's, um, and here it comes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you, if we put a compilation together, I think we could do uh, Beethoven's uh, yeah. Oh, uh, man. What's that? Yeah. These before until he came here. He made the transition from the ring to the outside of the ring. Um, he's doing a great job. I mean. Oh, yeah. He's really good at it. And he studies a lot of film. And we discussed what we saw. What we want. Yeah. I will approach it. Mmm, that's nice. Huh? And, um,. It just doesn't happen overnight. You no. It's a lot of practice and uh, timing. When you're implementing the movement, blocking, weaving, sleeping, oh, yeah. and it comes out of a rapid pace here. So it's got to be short punches, all knuckles, elbows in, hands in, chin down. So, you know, that just doesn't happen in the back. No. It takes a perfect time. Well, you, you focus on every last detail is what I notice is that every last little detail you are so pinpoint with and, you know, you make sure to stress that. We have to at the top of the game is detail is where it's at. Well, what is it? They, they say a, a, sm a very slim margin for error or there's little that's to hard. know? That, that's it. It's, it really is. It's, uh, because, again, we talked about it earlier. Give... Give a guy an opening that's at the top of this game. Yep. They will take advantage of it. Where maybe a, a level below, they're not going to be able to penetrate or, or capitalize on, on a small mistake like that. Well, again, somebody, especially at this caliber, I mean, you can't. And, and, and see, no matter how many drills you do, this, that, and the other, the bottom line is when live action starts, anything, anything can happen. Anything can happen. Yeah, so legitimately. You, you, you hope that all of the um, repetition sinks in and it becomes second nature mm -hmm. to where. You're not dropping that hand. Okay. So where the hands are right there, under his chin, elbows are in close. Um, close up that middle, close up the outside. But all the while, you're accomplishing an offensive and defensive drill that is really, you know, pinpoint and accurate and uh, precision. When also, too, Joe, like what he's doing right now, they're like, He's doing one motion, but there are like three or four different things going on over the course of that one fluid motion that make up what he's doing, right? That's exactly right. And that, and that, takes, and that takes a lot of uh, drilling. It takes a lot of drilling. And that's really the key. That's, that's what makes armies great. Mm -hmm. They're drilled. They're drilled yeah. over and over again to do their job so that when the live action starts, that drill somehow will uh, be implemented. And embedded in their brain. But then, it, again, when war happens, if anything go, can go wrong, it, it, it will go wrong. Yeah, you know? literally. And, and so that can happen in a fight, too. So no matter how well you do, you just hope that the mistakes and the flaws are not accentuated as much as they might be once the fur starts flying. Of course. How much better? How much better does he look in this fight, or leading up to this fight, compared to the last one? Not, not even close. Not even. So he's like considerably better. Infinitely. Better. Infinitely better. Yes. Yes. And that was an exceptional performance. Of course. Bonatsky in terms of 
offensive prowess and his defensive uh, posture was really good throughout the whole fight. You know, so a lot of that sank in. But now this is our second camp where everything we did in the first camp was much easier mm -hmm. to acclimate yourself to. And then as you go through the weeks and weeks, it just gets sharper and sharper to where at the point we are right now. So essentially, in the lead up to the Kov in, in the Kovnatsky fight, you set the foundation. Absolutely. Now you're just building, and he knows the drill. Yeah, he does. Nice. See, so he's punching, and then Jonathan's whacking him back quickly. Yeah. He's catching and throwing. Excellent, and beautiful. What the bottom? Three down? Four. Four, four down. Jo John said five, I said three, and uh, Chris had the right number. Oh, they want to kind of wrap it up now. Okay. You want, they want to wrap it up now? Okay, no worries. Okay, hey Chris, before we get ready to let you go, what do you want to tell the fans out there as you get ready for May 1st against Andy Ruiz? As you can see, I'm fucking working. Every day I've been working this hard, if not harder. This fight is important for myself. For my legacy, not only that, I want to make the fans happy they bought a ticket. I don't fight to be a paycheck fighter. I said it before, and I'll say it again. I don't know what the fuck I'm getting paid for this fight. I've never asked Al, I've never asked nobody what I get paid for my last 10, 15 fights. Mm -hmm. I'm not a paycheck fighter. I'm a fighter for the fans. So I hope they, they enjoy this fight and they buy this pay-per-view. Well, Chris, good luck. We'll see you next week, man. Making my luck. All right. Chris Areola, always a pleasure. Joe Goosen, thank you so much for wow. welcoming us here. What do you want to tell the fans out there, Hold Joe? Hold on, John. Hold on, John. What next do you want to belt. tell the fans out there, Joe, as we get ready to close out? Well, uh, look, I couldn't put it any better than Chris Areola just put it. Um, all of that is true, exactly what he said. And um, I just know that you've got the best Andy Ruiz that we've seen. Mm -hmm. Look at what he's done. He's with a great team. I think we've got the same thing going for us. Chris has really been dedicated to this fight. Probably the best we're ever going to see Chris is going to be in this fight. And uh, our team has been working hard as well. So. Look, I, I don't expect anything but a, a great, great fight. Like I said, I would buy this fight if I were just a boxing fan. Because I know that this is going to be, it's a 12, it's slated for 12 rounds. I don't know how many rounds it's going to go, but how many ever rounds it's going to go, it's going to be fireworks. No, 100%. And I like fireworks. Oh, as do I. Right? And you've been here in this area for a long time. I think next Saturday, May 1st, mm -hmm. People are going to remember May 1st, 2021, oh, yeah. with Ariola and Ruiz. I agree with that. And I've been here for 31 years now. Just so you said, how yes. many years I've been in this gym? 31 years. Well, we're going to remember it. We hope you join us. Thank you very much to Chris Ariola. Thanks to the legendary Joe Goosen. Thanks to Jonathan, the entire team. Tomorrow, I head to San Diego. We're going to visit Andy Ruiz Jr., Eddie Reynoso. So long from Southern California. On behalf of everybody, have a great one. We'll see you tomorrow in San Diego. Don't forget May 1st on pay-per-view. Andy Ruiz, Chris Ariola. They still continue to work. We'll see you tomorrow in San Diego. Thank you, Joe.